Hey guys, Stephanie here with the Aeroponic Tower channel and today I want to talk about the two different types of towers that I have. My towers are Tower Garden by Juice Plus, but I have two different varieties of towers and I've added some things to those towers and then I use these for different purposes. So I wanted to go through all of that and just share so you know if you're interested in this, what to actually order, what to look for, and how to set things up and all those different questions. And this is a hard video to make in a tight space like this. So I'm gonna do my best to get some close up shots for you guys so we can just go through each component and really understand how to maximize growth on your aeroponic tower, um, how to use them, how to use the different sections. My goal is education and helping people to grow food aeroponically. Aeroponics is a form of hydroponics, so you'll hear me interchange those quite a bit. And these allow me to grow food year round. It's been amazing what I've been able to do with these towers. I am very ready for spring and I'm very ready to get them out of this garage. I'm in a garage right now, actually, that I keep at a temperature of 62 degrees. I don't go above 62. If I did, I could grow more types of vegetables in the winter, uh, just for cost purposes. I am satisfied with the things I can grow at that temperature, but as soon as spring comes, these will go outside and they will stay outside until next winter, except there is one of these towers used to grow greens in the summer and I move it inside our house and it's designed to be easy to move and so I'm going to talk about all of those things. So the goal being that I can grow things like cilantro in the dead of the summer where cilantro would bolt really quickly outside in a hot garden, um, lettuce, I can still grow cabbages, collards, all of those cold season crops can be grown inside in the dead of the summer while my other towers are outside growing the zucchinis and the squash and the winter squash and the peppers and tomatoes and eggplants and all the other things we like to eat. Okay, this tower here, this is called the home unit. And when you purchase this tower, you can purchase it with lights or without, and it's going to be this tall. So as is, if you add it to your shopping cart, you can add it with the lights to make it a kit, but it's only this tall. What I did was added an extension kit to the top of this one. And some people say never do that. Just like with any gardening, everybody has their methods. This works for me. I grow in these all the time. You can see there's an abundance of food and I'll talk more about this on the top. So there's obviously no issue. I've been doing this for a year on this tower with this extension. So this is just how I like to do it and it works. And that's what I'm here to do is share what I do and what works for me. And if your needs are the same, it may line up perfectly. If you've got different goals than I do, then maybe a different method would work. So just keep that in mind. You know, these are the things that I do and work for me. And hopefully um, they line up with what your goals are. And I know you will have success if you follow the methods that I use because I have success doing them. So this is an extension kit and this is a baby greens extension kit. It used to be called a microgreens extension kit. I think that people just didn't really enjoy growing microgreens on it. So it's been changed to a baby greens extension kit. And what that looks like is instead of down here, I have four pods. So one, two, three, four going around. We call these grow cages or stackable grow cages, I believe is what these are called. Terrible with the names. And then what you put your vegetable in is a grow port. So each section has four. So four, eight, 12, 16, 16 grow ports on the bottom. That is going to give you room to grow larger vegetables. So you can see how big my Swiss chard is. If I had this up here, it would just overpower and be too much. So I've got my giant Swiss chard here. These are some brassicas here, um, collard greens down here that can get even bigger. They can get three times that size. I have a pepper growing over on this side, a squash down here at the bottom that's going to get significant in size and I think that's a kale, I'm not sure, but it's a leafy green that's gonna stay a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna talk about how to set up your towers and things to be mindful of a little bit further in this video. And then what happens over here is you move into this baby green section. And what we have on the baby green section is eight grow ports. These are not the same shape. 
The grow port's on the bottom. You're going to put what's called a cage in there. Um, it snaps in and it holds the plant more stable. These, you just plant your vegetables in what's called a rock wool. And we'll talk about that more later. And then you stick them right in. It just slides right in. This allows you to grow a lot more food, in my opinion, a lot faster. Now the cost of these vegetables could be a little bit higher just depending because they can't get as big in the baby green section as they can in the grow ports down below. But I'm talking like five cents, 10 cents at the most. And with food inflation so high, I'm trying to maximize the amount of food I can grow, the variety of food I can grow. And so I added a microgreens extension kit to this. So originally it would have been 16 grow ports and then what, eight, 16. And then 16 baby green sections. And now actually as I'm closer to this and looking at it a little bit closer, if you didn't add this extension, your tower would only be this tall. So up to here on me. That, in my opinion, is just way too short. Look at all this food I have on top from here to here is an abundance of food. It goes all the way around the tower and I'll talk about some things I have growing there. So to me, it is a no brainer just to order an extension kit and maximize what you can grow on these to have more access to food, right? So if we ordered the home unit with the lights, it would be this tall and the light cap sits right here and this would allow all your plants to get the right amount of light and one of the arguments is with adding an extension kit is that you're not going to get enough light to all the plants clearly you can see that's not a problem i don't move these lights around intentionally unless i see a plant that might be struggling um so I just haven't had an issue with that. Some people will say you have to move them really close to your seedlings to get your seedlings to start. I also have not had an issue with that. My lights, the way you see them, this is usually how they are. They get moved because they're in my way when I'm doing videos and things, and then I'll put them back. But I don't put a lot of thought into where they are. If, however, I do notice something isn't growing or thriving up top, it's a simple fix. You just raise this light like this. It's on these metal flexible arms. And so it's super easy to just put this up like this. Or if there's a baby, I've got this baby green down here on the bottom. If I feel like it's not growing fast enough, I can pull this down, give it more light. Very simple to use. And I will address the lights really quick, just so you guys understand how simple they are to use. They pop right off. So I actually don't have enough lights for all of my towers. And you wanna run lights on your plants about 12 to 16 hours. Again, not a perfect science. I sometimes leave them on 24 hours and then move them. Probably not the greatest practice, but I share that to say, this is not a perfect science you can't really fail at it unless you didn't turn the lights on and then that would be a problem but it just pops right off the top and i will move it in the morning to another tower that doesn't have lights and then at night i move it back that's a way if you need to make a budget cost and you want to get two towers i just decided to do that because i wanted to make sure i could grow a lot of food and i couldn't afford to get both lights at the time this light is also on an automatic timer so i don't have to worry about it it just has these little ridges and you set the time to how many hours you want it to be on and what time of day you want it to be on and it automatically does everything it needs to do these are led lights so they're very energy efficient and just to give you guys a cost of a power because i know that's a common question um, to run a tower and this is going to depend on where you live obviously in the cost of electricity but to run a tower with the lights is about 16 dollars a month so i eat that in a few days off my tower of things i would have bought at the grocery store 16 dollars worth of greens just because we eat off of these all the time so to me that's a no-brainer if you take the lights off and move your tower outside where it's getting natural sunlight that cost goes down significantly because all that's running in these systems is a small pump and it doesn't take much it's like a fountain pump or a fish tank pump and it's coming on and off it's not running full time you can hear there's no sound in the background it turns on at a certain time and then turns off i'll talk about that in a few minutes as well like how that timer works and what you want to set it to but when these are outside and they have natural sunlight your cost to grow food is like six dollars a month in power again depends on your power costs but very very inexpensive so this is the home unit and this holds 
13 gallons of water. So that would be the biggest significant difference between the two towers. The one on this side is a 20 gallon tank and I'll get to that one next because I want to stick with just covering everything I can think of on this one. It's a 13 gallon tank and it's on wheels and it can roll around. So if I need to look at the other side, I can just flip it around like this. Oh, my wire smushing some of my plants. Okay, there we go. The wire was smushing some of the plants, but I can just easily turn this around. It's on wheels. That makes it helpful because this is called the home unit because most people like to keep this one inside their home. It's the one that I put inside our home in the summer to grow lettuce and any cold season crops. I like to have access to cilantro 12 months out of the year. That is nearly impossible in most growing zones because it's just super sensitive to heat and it likes to bolt, which means goes to seed really quickly. In my tower gardens, it doesn't do that. I can have cilantro year round, as long as I move the tower inside when it starts to get warm. Same as lettuce, lettuce grown outside in the heat of the summer. First off, it starts to not grow at all. It doesn't like that hot, humid weather, but it can also get really bitter. Um, arugula, same thing. Any of those greens, kale, they start to get bitter when they are exposed to extreme heat and they do really well and taste really sweet and aromatic, especially kale and arugula when they are kept in a cooler temperature. So this is the tower you would want if you want to grow food indoors all year or if you want to grow food indoors sometime of the year. And you can hear one of the towers just kicked on. So I'm going to turn that off. But what it's doing is it's running a pump and the pump is in the basin with the water and it's pushing the water through a central pump line all the way to the top. And then it fills up a little basin. We call this the shower cap on the top. And then it drips down into the tube where the roots of the plants are. And the pump, when you have it indoors, it has a timer on it. They all come with an automatic timer, so you don't have to worry about anything. These kits come with everything except for a good seedling startup setup, and I'll talk about that too in a minute. So all you have to do is plug it in and set the lights to what you want them on and set the timer. If the timer is as simple as hitting a button, you choose zero if your tower is outside, and you choose, some call it an I, I think it's a one, I don't know. It's probably an eye for indoors, but either way, one for growing indoors. So I went ahead and turned that off so it's not too distracting, but that gives you an idea of how simple the pump is. You literally just choose zero or one based on where you're growing, and it's automatic. Everything is super easy. It's the reason I chose these. I did not want to have to make my own, invent some kind of system, fuss with designing. I just didn't want to do it. A lot of people make them from scratch. These are tried and true. They've been around for many years. I used to have one in Florida actually, so I was familiar with them and they grow, they work. They grow an enormous amount of food very easily. So with the home unit, just to recap, this is the one you wanna use indoors in the summer to grow leafy greens. This one is actually designed to be a little bit better for smaller to medium sized plants. You can get a cage that goes all the way to the top. It'll go to the top of the, um, true size of these without the extension, but you can add an extension to that too if you bought two cages to make it a little taller. And what a cage will do is just support things like peas, green beans, um, bell peppers, eggplant. You can grow tomatoes on this. I have a video I'm gonna link below about particular seeds that you would want to get if you were gonna grow, especially on a home unit, and they're just dwarf varieties. You would wanna grow a small tomato plant, and peppers are all about the same. Cucumbers, you can get container sized cucumbers, you can get container sized peas instead of huge trellising peas. Same with cucumbers. So you can grow those things on a home tower. You just wanna be mindful of the size. If you were to put a standard sized tomato in this, especially one that was indeterminate, meaning it just continues to grow, it would take over so much stuff and just be a total hot mess in your house. So if we want to manage our space well, Check out that video below. It talks a lot about different seed varieties to give you ideas. So you can grow peppers in here. I have collard greens. This is a brassica. I think it's cauliflower, not sure. I've got my Swiss chard. I did put a squash on the bottom over there and that will trellis over the side. So you have a lot of options with the home unit. It's just 
better for medium and smaller plants. So this collard green can get massive. Collard greens can be huge. I'm not gonna let it get that huge. I eat off of it frequently. I use it for wraps. I like the leaves to be a little bit smaller. So it's gonna stay smaller. And eventually I'm gonna eat off of it so much that it stresses the plant and it's gonna wanna flower and go to bolt and I'll harvest the whole thing. I always juice the extra parts. So those are some ideas for using your home tower. On the top part, I made a video on things you can grow up here. And I do things way different than others when it comes to using my baby green section. I use it as a nursery for one. So if I have a Swiss chard that is really small, I can keep it up here in the baby green section. And then at some point it's gonna get large and I'm gonna wanna move it out and move it to a grow port. If I want it to get that big, I can just continue to eat, eat off of it and force it to stay small by keeping it up here if I like um, baby leaves of Swiss chard. And I have a whole video on Swiss chard on when you ultimately want to harvest it and things like that that I'll link below too. This one I wanted to get big because I'm juicing these and it just is easier to juice a couple of large leaves versus a bunch of baby tiny greens. But you can use it as a nursery. So if you have a cabbage and you don't have a grow port ready because you're growing something else, you can put your cabbage up here and let it get you know this size or so and then when you free up a spot and one of your grow ports you harvest something that's ready to be eaten down there you can move it to that section that helps you to have a faster turnover of food and to always be growing food which is my goal to always have access to food and to make sure this is a constant flowing system i know i keep referencing other videos but i will also put a link to a video where i talk about that and how to the formula for how to start seeds so that you never end up in a situation where you ate everything or everything just kind of aged and it was time to clean it out and now you have nothing to put in. My towers always have something going in them at all times. You can see here there are new starts. So tiny little babies just getting started. This is a kale. And then I have things like this arugula that's ready to be eaten. And I'm going to harvest this and make a meal out of this. I've actually got three of them that I want to harvest for our dinner later tonight. So that's what I do on my baby greens section. I like to do things like arugula. Arugula is a plant that you don't want to cut and come again. So cut and come is when you would cut this off, leave about an inch and it will grow back. I rarely do that with things. I will take a leaf like this one and leave the plant and go juice this but rarely do I cut the entire thing off and let it grow back. I have just found it's slow to reproduce and it's faster if I already have seeds going and I can just plop in another baby plant and that plant will turn into this a lot faster than this will regrow itself. There's also the issue of food starts to change. Some things are not, not affected by a cut and come again method. They will grow back and taste the same. Some change in flavor and texture and arugula is one of those when you cut this the first round this is very aromatic it has a little spice to it but it's very aromatic and mild if i cut this and let it grow it starts to get a little bit more bitter every time a little bit more heat every single time i do that so i just prefer to cut all of this i've got lots of arugula started and i just plop another little baby set of arugula in there and i'm eating arugula at least once a week we can have an arugula salad which is amazing i also talk in my seed video that's linked below how to grow greens like this you don't want to buy seed packets if you're going to grow arugula like this to cut and then throw away the whole thing if you just wanted one arugula plant every month or so, you can buy a seed packet. But because I'm doing such a fast turnaround of arugula, I buy sprouting seeds and they're not even a quarter of the cost. They're less than that. I can buy a pound of arugula seeds. I think I paid 14 or $15 versus a packet of arugula seeds can be as much as three or $4. So if you're going to be doing something like this where you're harvesting it quite often and starting over and over and over, then definitely invest in sprouting seeds for those things. All right, and just to give you some ideas for growing on your home unit, and then we'll switch over to the next tower. I think I covered everything on this one. 
13 gallons. This is a tower that if you were to have it outside, you're going to have to fill the tank a little bit more frequently than do the flex next to me, which is a 20 gallon tank. And so that's something to be mindful of. If you have this inside and you were to leave town, 13 gallons is gonna to be totally fine. Even with a mature set like this, I wouldn't worry about leaving this tower for a week. I would just fill it to the top and it'd be totally fine. Outside, you can lose a lot of water for evaporation. And I did leave one of these outside for 10 days and it, I missed it by like two days. By the time I got home, there was rock wool, had its tiny bit of moisture, but the plants were completely gone. So I missed the mark by like two days keeping it outside. So be mindful of that if you travel. Um, a bigger tank might be a better option because you can easily set these up and leave them and not have to worry about them or worry about your plants except for pests you know pest problem that you don't catch in time may be an issue but as far as water and as far as them having everything they need you don't have to do anything it's all automatic and so as long as you have enough water to withstand the amount of time you're gonna be gone you're totally fine so on this tower I have 64 grow spots 16 of them normal size grow ports and the rest are baby greens. That's a lot of space to be growing food. I have bok choy on here. I have mustards. I keep my cilantro growing in the baby green section. It does great and we eat it fast enough that it doesn't get overwhelming to the space. I have baby kale, arugula, like I mentioned. I like to grow. This is fenugreek. This is in the nursery. So I'm going to move this at some point when it gets too big. Maybe, um, it's the first time I've grown fenugreek on the tower. We'll see, you can kind of see it's draping through. So it might be fine to stay in there indefinitely and just have it kind of, I could shape this to put the lettuce in front of it and just weave it into things. So we'll see, but that's fenugreek. I like to grow the baby romaine in here. It does really well in that section and typically has enough space to get to full size. A baby romaine is about this big, fully grown with a tight head. So that's plenty of space for that. There's some water spinach, tot soy. You can do tot soy, bok choy, um, pak choy. I think is it pak choy, bok choy? Anyway, I believe tat soy and pak choy are the smaller varieties. If you wanted to get into bok choy, you can keep it. I actually have someone here. It gets bigger and we just eat it when it gets to the right size or it's taking up too much space. But you could also put those in the grow port if you feel like it's too big and you want it to get, if you want to grow one to full size. So this is all the bok choy. I did three or four seeds in each one of these because I plan to eat it at this size, not let it get huge. There are some more mustard green mixes up here. This looks like celery or parsley. Celery, you will want to eventually move. If this is celery, I'll need to move it to a different tower because it will get too big for this spot. Parsley though, you can keep small. You can harvest it when it gets bushy and then just start over, or you can move it to another grow port and let it get even bigger. So many options with the home tower using a baby greens extension kit to grow an enormous amount of food. On this side, let's just take a look. I just wanna give you guys ideas on things to grow. We've got more tat soy, bok choy, baby greens. Um, these, I'll do the same thing as I talked about with the arugula. I will chop this off in one swoop and make it part of our dinner and then start over. Probably do that soon. I have an empty grow port. This is what the empty grow ports look like here. Basil, basil does amazing on an aeroponic tower. Basil can be grown in the baby green section if you want to plant a lot of them, but basil is a little bit harder to start for me. So I grow those in a regular size grow port and let them get pretty big. That is it for the home unit. Now let's talk about the other one, which is called the Flex. This is actually really hard to film because these are so tall, they don't wanna fit into my camera lens. So I thought I'd come lower and we'll just talk about the basins first. So this is the 20 gallon. This is called the Flex tower garden. This one was the home tower garden. This one's 13 gallon tank. This one is a 20 gallon tank. If you want to grow winter squash, zucchini, um, eggplants, peppers, tomatoes, bigger vegetables, so medium size to bigger, then you want to get a flex unit. And I will talk about how you can also add a baby green section to this one in a little bit. So both towers have just this little cover and inside is where the water is and the nutrients and on the nutrients it will tell you exactly what to add for the 20 gallon and what to add for the 13 gallon so it's a no-brainer 
The nutrients are also super simple. You have a B and an A. You add the same amount of each. And then after a couple hours, you test your water. These come with a pH kit so you can test the water. And then if your pH was too low, it'll have a pH plus. And you can add a little bit of this, which is the base. Same thing as this. And then if it's, and if it's too high, then there's a pH negative and you would add that to pull the pH down. Very simple. Once again, I'm going to give bad advice here probably, but just so I can express the simplicity, simplicity of these, I do not test these weekly. I am at a point now where I put the nutrients in and I rarely even test them after because I'm so familiar with my water and my plants that I can tell when they have the right pH and then I can tell when something gets a little off and that's when I'll test it and tweak it. When you're getting started, definitely practice testing your pH and over time it becomes just kind of second nature. So it's not over complicated, just so you know. When to refill these, I let them go pretty close to empty and then I refill them with all new nutrients and I'll just dump what's the remnant into the garden or house plants. It makes excellent nutrients for house plants if you don't want to waste it. Um, there's also some thoughts on that. These are water soluble minerals that go into the tank. Some believe to keep the balance, you have to be adding them at certain times. I have just found my plants do fine by waiting until it's almost empty and then starting over. If you wanted to add your nutrients every time you add more water, so let's say you like to add water once a week so you don't forget, and maybe your tank, because it's going to depend what's growing, what time of year, the temperatures, how big your plants are. The bigger the plants, obviously, the faster they're going to go through water. Fruiting plants are going to absorb a ton of water when they're in the fruiting stage. So that's going to change, but let's say you like to have it on a timer and you put water in every Monday so you don't forget. If it's halfway full, then you would add half the nutrients. So you'll have to do a little bit of math on that. I'm sure there's a perfect science to making sure these plants get everything they need and are thriving. Again, I'm a homeschooling mom, three teenagers. I wait till my tank's almost empty, fill it back up with nutrients, and it grows this enormous amount of food. Totally fine, no problems. And with the nutrients, in time, I will share more on that. I just want to paint the picture that this is not overly complicated and anybody can grow this way. I think sometimes if we dive too deep into the science of a tomato may absorb too much too fast versus other things, then that gets really complicated and it kind of takes the simplicity out of these. And these are very simple and but makes it overwhelming so that then we're in a place where we're not going to grow food and we're not going to try. I can promise you I've grown everything I've mentioned before in these towers and I've paid very little attention to the nutrients in my water aside from looking at my plants and going, wow, that looks incredibly healthy. This is obviously set to the right pH. I'm not messing with it or looking at them and noticing they are yellowing or maybe getting brown tips and then there's something wrong. I, I need to clean that up. Broccoli, for example, does have different nutritional needs, tomatoes, things like that. So as I dive deeper into experiencing how to tweak and play with nutrients, I will share that if I decide to do that. Right now, this is what I do. This works and this is super simple. So with the flex unit, this one does not turn. It's not on wheels. You can get a wheelie cart for it. It's like $100, I think. I just don't need it. These slide across my concrete floors really easily because I will take them to the other side of the room and open the garage doors and let them get exposed to natural sunlight as the seasons change. And on that note, if this is in your house all winter and you want to move it outdoors in the spring, you want to start to expose it to natural light slowly. If you take it out and put it in the dead heat of the sun after it's been inside all winter, oh my gosh, there's a critter running in the garage. Ah! Okay, sorry about that. If you were to take this outside, expose it into the dead heat, kill everything. So you need to expose it to a little bit of light, just like at gardening seeds when you start seedlings inside and you take them out, you have to do what's called hardening them off. We need to do the same with our towers. So just be mindful of that if you want to transition these inside and out. And this one, when you purchase it, 
It's called the Flex, and it's called the Flex because it's flexible on what you can do with it and what you can grow in it. You can add extensions to this one as well, and I highly recommend it because this one is actually even shorter than this one when you get it. And to me, this is just way too short. On the Flex Tower, it comes with four, four, It comes with 24 grow ports. So right to here is how tall my tower would be. And I would be missing these eight plants that I'm growing in my extension kit. I tell everyone, especially on a flex, to just go ahead and get the extension kit. That's eight more plants you get to grow, which just maximizes the amount of food you're growing. Um, so this is an extension kit with the grow ports. You can put a baby greens extension kit on this one as well. The baby greens kit is a little bit taller. I have that on some of my other flex towers. It just depends what your goals are. If you want to grow a lot of these smaller greens that you're going to go through really quickly, then definitely add it. If you wanted to grow larger plants, medium to larger size plants on a flex full time, then you would just want to add the extension kit with the regular grow ports. So things you can grow in the flex unit. I grow my celery on the top row of a flex unit. The celery does amazing. It's tall and bushy and it just does brilliant growing up in that space. It doesn't need a whole lot of light when it gets higher. So mine do fine and if I, they do feel like they're not getting enough light. Again, I can just raise this up, but I keep celery on the top parts of these. Um, you can grow your brassicas, this is cauliflower, your peppers, your tomatoes, cucumbers, peas, eggplant, winter squash, summer squash, all of those things. This is the tower. So medium to large, this is the one you want to use. With any kind of winter squash, or if you want to grow melons, watermelons, cantaloupe, things like that, um, spaghetti squash, I love to grow spaghetti squash on my towers. They all do great. It's just a matter of managing those plants because they're huge, big vining plants. So if you want to do that, some people put these outside on rocks, like they'll rock an area and they'll let it grow on that. And so when those vines start to trellis, they can go on the rocks and they're not exposed to a lot of water or dirt where there's going to be pests. So that's an idea. You can put a trellis behind this. That's something I'm going to be doing this year. So look out for those videos if you want trellis ideas, but I'm going to put trellises almost like a fence around my towers and on the back side of my towers where that fence side is, I'm going to grow the watermelons and the cantaloupe and the spaghetti squash and all of those things that need a lot of space to vine and they will be busy, you know, growing up a trellis behind these systems and then on the sides and on the front, I can focus on other things like Swiss chard, broccoli, cauliflower, eggplant, tomatoes and all those things. So just some ideas to share with you guys on what you can grow and different ways to set them up. The only difference with the flex system versus the home system is that it's a larger tank. You have to buy wheels if you want it on wheels and that's it. The lights are the same. If you want to buy a light unit for it, it's the exact same one. These are actually plugged into the same timer. So they're running on the same timer. There is no difference really other than choosing which one meets the needs of what you want to grow. If you want to grow inside and you don't mind hauling something that's a little bit heavier, you can go with the flex. If you want it to be super easy, then definitely stick with the home unit for that. These are not heavy. I take them outside all the time to wash them off when we have warm days and just to let them be exposed to a little bit of natural light. And I'll show you guys how easy it is to just pop the top on these. Oh, and one more thing. This one also has a cage that you can buy. And the cage is what you're going to need if you wanna grow peppers, eggplants, tomatoes, cucumbers, things like that. Um, even with a trellising system in the back, if you wanted to grow peppers and tomatoes on the front and then grow vining cucumbers and squash and melons on the back that go on the trellis, you would still want the cage because pepper plants are going to get heavy and want to fall forward and we need to stabilize those plants. So that is what the cage is used for. It's used to just create a wall so that those heavier plants, as they start to produce fruit, they're not trying to lean forward and then snapping at the base here. Because we are growing a vertical, we do need to be mindful of how we support those so they don't just flop over and break on us. So this one does have a cage and I highly recommend it if you wanna grow anything in the medium vegetable size fruiting family. To take the top off, they have screws where you can screw the tops in. I never add the screws because I take my tops off quite frequently 
and take them outside and hose them off just to clean them up. Um, as far as cleaning, that's a common topic. Some people will take them apart, soak them in citric acid, and it takes everything off and makes them like brand new. I never do that because I always have, like I mentioned, baby greens and greens in the middle section of growing and things ready to harvest. So I cannot take it apart and let it sit in a solution. These are never not working for me. So I have to come up with other ways to clean them. I do that by carrying the top outside and I will just hose carefully in between. I can blast the hose on some of these middle parts that might get a little bit of sediment buildup without destroying my leaves and then lightly sprayed the leaves off and I use a microfiber cloth. Not a big deal. I do that pretty frequently because I never take them apart and that just helps to keep them nice and tidy for me. And like any garden, they're still mess. I'm not gonna tell you these are you know, clean and beautiful all the time. They are clean and beautiful most of the time, but there are times where it gets, where it's time to give them a nice cleanup. And you know, you can see there's a little browning here, but again, blasting it with the hose without hitting your plants. Um, gets all that sediment off, a little microfiber. You can use magic eraser if you've got a particular spot that's not wanting to come clean. Not a big deal. You can also take every single plant out of this, clean it, put it back together and put all the plants back in. That works as well. Just make sure your roots aren't in sp exposed to the sun. Keep them in a nice cool place and make sure they stay moist. I do that as well. When I clean them sometimes, if they get to a point where I feel like they really need a good scrubbing, that's an option as well. So you can see here, I can pick this up. It's not a big deal. This actually has the lights on and I typically would not pick them up. There we go. I typically believe would not pick it up with the lights on. I take the lights off and then pick it up. But I just wanted to show you guys how it comes apart and how it's not super overwhelming if you need to move them or manage them. It's one of the things I love the most. This one, I'm not gonna do it right now because the lights are on, I don't wanna take them off. Same thing, you just lift it up, carry it where you need to carry it. You can wheel the basin outside, recycle the water to other plants. And I think that's it guys. So home unit, great for indoors, small to medium plants. Flex, you can grow pretty much anything but do deep root vegetables on this one as long as you can get creative on where to let those plants grow as they take off because they will take off. These are amazing. Plants love them. They grow so much food for our family. And I hope they bless you guys the way they have us. If you have any questions or if you have a tower and you have your own experiences, share them in the comments, please. I would love to hear that. You can find out more information about these at the aeroponictowerchannel.com and I will link that below. And thanks for watching guys. I pray you have amazing success and that these provide you with as much joy and as much healthy food as they have for my family. They are such a blessing and I hope you get to experience that blessing as well.